out of YouTube cards. This is Jack Spade here, coming to you from High Noon Leatherworks, where we're going to show you step by step how to create leather goods from patterns all the way to the finished product. Stay tuned. Howdy YouTube pards, Jack Spade here with High Noon Leatherworks. Back with the final episode on the 1800's double loop holster. And today we're going to be doing stitching. So we should finish it up today. I may have to do a little fast forward because stitching takes a little while because I do it all by hand. But I'll get you started on it and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up today. Stay tuned. Alright, today we have our dyed holster. It's got our punched holes in for our stitching. We're going to be using some artificial sinew. We're going to be using black. And that's what we're going to use for our neat with our needles to stitch. We're going to be using two round needles. These are leather stitching needles and we're going to be doing what's called a saddle stitch. So I'll show you how to do a saddle stitch today. And also, I'm going to keep handy these little tiny needle nose pliers because sometimes it gets a little tight pushing those needles through those holes in the leather. So, uh, let's get started. Okay, first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we uh, measure out the amount of sinew we're going to need to stitch this holster up. Um, I go by a rule of thumb of uh, four times the amount of sinew that I'm going to stitch as far as the length of my stitch. So what I'll do is I'll take my sinew and I'll literally put it on my stitch line and I'll run it around and basically all I'm doing is measuring that. So I'm getting the length of my full stitch run here and then what I do, as you can see, there's my full stitch run that I measured out. And then what I'll do is I'll take four times that amount to make sure that I have enough by the time I stitch through and then I come back and I can tie off at the end. So you, the worst thing that can happen uh, is that you don't have enough stitching material or sinew or thread, whatever you're using. Uh, you want to make sure you have plenty. So, seems like, for me, the rule of thumb of four times the length of what I'm going to stitch seems to work out great. So, all I do is I'll fold that over. That's two times. I'll come back and take that out. That's three times. And then I'll take it out one more time. And that's four times. And then I'll just go maybe a couple more inches just to make sure I got plenty. And then cut that off. So there's the amount of sinew I should need. Maybe just a hair more. Again, it, it's kind of like uh, measure twice, cut once. You're better off having it too long than too short. Um, the next thing I want to do is, it, this is waxed uh, artificial sinew, so it does have some wax on it. I, I think uh, I prefer the waxed because uh, it does, in my opinion, make a tighter stitch. Um, I'll take the needles, I'll start with one, thread that needle. And what I'll do, since I have, when you unfold this, you can see you have a pretty long piece of sinew here. What I'll do is I'll take that and you can pull that through pretty far so that you don't have to pull through the piece that you're stitching so far. And then as you go, you can just keep pulling this up. So as you start running out of sinew you could just keep advancing that through your needle but I do suggest that when you start I'll thread the other needle when you start you want to make sure that whatever you pull through your needle 
to start with that it's even on both needles. So I will measure that and I just do it by eye, make sure those are even on both sides before I get started. And then you can see how much I have of the sinew hanging down. So I'll take that once I get that where I want it on my needle. Again, it is waxed, so I'll, I'll pull that on the eye of the needle and just kind of mash it down on there a little bit. And it'll get more distinct as you pass through the leather a few times. And then I'm ready to start my saddle stitching. I'm going to place this holster in a stitching horse so that uh, it'll hold on to it while I'm doing the stitching. That's one thing that becomes very difficult. If you don't have a stitching horse or something to hold your piece, it becomes very difficult to hold it yourself and use both hands to do your saddle stitching. So I'll get this in a stitching horse and then I'll reset up the camera and we'll go from there. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of pieces of just scrap leather and I'm going to put that between my holster on each side and my saddle horse because I don't want to scar my nice holster. So I'll uh, fold that over and then I'll place it in here, my saddle horse, stitching horse. Put a piece of that leather on each side. And then clamp it down. Once I clamp that down, then what I like to do is I like to take a uh, small clamp, pressure clamp of some kind, and lock that horse in. So the spring tension on the lock that comes on this horse, this is, this is not a high dollar one. Um, is not the best so I always clamp it once I get it where I want it that way it's my piece is not going to move and uh, I can go ahead and stitch without worrying about that so I'll grab my sinew and my needles and the first thing I want to do is I'm going to start at the top up here so that I can end over here on the toe of the holster and that'll hide my stitch, my last stitch better when I tie it off. And I want to find my first hole. I want to go through the front side, find my first hole on the back side. And I want to go through both pieces with the first needle. Pull that through. And then I want to pull those needles up and get them even. So I want to start out with those being equal so that I have the same amount of thread on both sides. Now that's my first half, what I call a half stitch. Next thing I'm going to do is go to the second hole, put the needle through the front, Put the needle through the second hole in the back. Pull that needle through. And just pull, tug on it just a little bit. If you pull real hard on it, you're going to pull your other thread and needle back through the hole. Your first hole. Drop that one. Take your second needle. And you're going to go back through the back side the same hole you just came through 
and through the front side of the second hole that you went through. So you're going through the same hole, just different directions. Now that you have a full stitch, you can take both pieces and then you can tug on those pretty tight because now it can't slide through there. You have a full uh, stitch in there. So I've got my first stitch done. Now I'll go through the front side and you got to find that back side, that back hole. Pull that all the way through. Again, just tug on it snug. Find the hole you just came through with your second needle. And you're going to go back through the same hole again from back to front. Where the first needle you went front to back. And then pull tight again. Again, take your needle that's through the front, go through the front and the back, pull it all the way through, tug on it till it's snug, drop that needle, grab your second needle that's hanging, go from the back to the front through the same hole you just pulled the other needle through, pull it all the way through, grab both threads, and pull tight. So you're pulling very snug at that point. What that does is that locks in your stitches, especially if you have that waxed thread or that sinew. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way down this holster and I'll come back when I get to the toe to the end where we're going to tie it off. Okay, I'm down to about the last three stitches here, right on the toe of the holster. And you can see I flipped it around. 
so I could see a little bit better. I'm going to keep saddle stitching here. You can see how short my sinew is getting now. And I'm getting toward the end. And I'll just keep saddle stitching those last few. Keep pulling them tight. Get into the second one here. Now this is where it changes up when you get to the end here. I'm basically on my last hole. And I have a very, very small opening there. Very small. And what I'm going to do is sometimes I'll back stitch and depending on how much wear that area is going to get, which on this toe it's not going to get anywhere at all. Let's just keep that toe closed. Um, but I'll back stitch one hole just to make it stronger and tighter. And I could have done that at the very beginning. I could have back stitched a hole to make that stronger and tighter. Um, but sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't, just depends. And then what I'll do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to stick the needle through that hole and I'm going to pull up on that, or push down on that needle just a little bit and pull the tip of that needle through that opening. Now sometimes you have to maneuver it a little bit with your thumb, your other thumb, so you can get that needle to come out of there like that. And that is difficult sometimes because that leather is thick and it's not real pliable. And you can see how I pull that thread through that leftover opening. And I'll snug that down. I'll come back over to this side and I'll run through that hole and I'll do the same thing. I'll push down on that needle, kind of open this side of that opening and I'll find where I can pull that thread through with that needle in that opening and I'll just kind of work that until I can get it because you don't want to stab it through the rest of the through the leather on the other side. So just kind of keep working it. Don't want to break your needle. This is where your needle nose pliers may come in handy too. Is I'll just keep working it and pushing it through and you can see that needle's coming out that opening now. Again, I'll grab it, pull that through, and what you can see is I've got both threads on both sides coming out of that opening. So I'll take those needles off Set those aside, pull those both strings real tight, that pulls that opening together, and then I'll tie me a knot right there. And that knot will actually pull down in that opening, so you won't even see it. So you want to pull it nice and tight, so it pulls down in that opening. And then what I'll do is I'll cut that off with a pair of scissors. I'll cut them off even. And you will see them sticking out just a hair. And I'll take my tiny needle nose pliers and I'll take a lighter and I'll burn those edges. They'll melt, that wax melts. And then I can push those finished sinew strings down in that tiny opening. So they're not going to fray. They're closed up. That stitch is totally done and you can't even see it. Let me take it out of here so I can get a little closer to the camera. So you can't even see the string where that stitch ends. So there's my stitched holster. 
and now we're ready to put it through the skirt and it'll be finished I'll be right back all right now that I have all my stitching done now I can take the holster itself bend my skirt over and I can work my holster into that skirt on those straps And sometimes you got to be a little patient with it. You don't want to get to this point in your project and uh, pull too hard and uh, stretch that leather to where it's not going to hold the holster tight or uh, God forbid you rip a piece. So we're just going to work that in there real slow. Keep pulling that holster through those straps on that skirt until we get it all the way down in there and then work that up on this end where it goes through the belt and there it is there's the finished product so we went all the way through Step one of making the pattern, we cut the leather, we did some decorating, we did some burnishing and finishing, we did some stamping and decorating, did some stitching, dyeing, and now there's your finished product. I'll be right back and we'll see how that holster fits that gun that we had that we made our pattern off of. I got the uh, Colt replica and again this is just a BB gun pellet gun excellent replica um, and this is what we made our pattern off of and we're going to see if this fits in the holster that we just finished and it will be a little stiff at first and probably the best thing to do is once you get that in there the way you want it, fix your skirt the way you want it, and then just let that sit in there for a little while. And let that leather kind of mold to that gun that you made it for. And you see how sharp that is with that stainless cold in there and that black holster. So it turned out great. Hope you can make one of these if you want to. Uh, come back to the channel because next week we'll be starting a new project. So thanks for visiting and I'll see you next time.